Okay, so the name of the game today is jackets, quilted, patchwork, patchwork jackets. The goals are mm, deal with the cold. It is horrible outside. We are making warm things, um, making gifts. That's why there's multiple ones happening. And also using up fabric. Um, I've got a local thrift shop, a, a secondhand shop, that has fun things like upholstery samples and also leftover fabric. So that's going to heavily influence my approach. Although it could totally be leftover clothes or whatever like we did with the vest last video. Um... This is going to be my usual Chaos Gremlin approach. Obviously, you could use a proper pattern, but if you want to just see how it ends up looking with complete Chaos Gremlin and with several different stylistic approaches, um, then this will be informative, which is kind of awesome. So. So if you're being really casual and unshaped about it, very flat, and you've actually got a piece big enough, the other one that's shaped like this is actually the core is getting patchworked as well, but this seemed easier to show it on. Anyway, look, flannel shirt. If you lay it out flat and cut out the outline, then you get a good starting point that's easy to patchwork on top of. And then you can take a stab at well, you can find the center front and then take a stab at a neck shape and then just start sewing patches on top of it, which will be fun. Or you can make your life a little more complicated. Um, in my case, just a little. Um, however many pieces you want to do, I suggest you flatline with patches for the most part and then worry about um, sewing them together after they're mostly as thick as you want them to be. But this is a thing from when my mother was in high school, so like the 60s, maybe, I don't know, 70s, 70s? Um, yeah, that. And so she loves wearing it, my sister loves wearing it. They are both getting coats patterned off of it loosely in that there are like curved arm size and sizing, right? So I cut out a core to serve as a pattern slash mock-up slash whatever based on that and then started layering on top of it. I actually had enough of this fabric to make a lining. There's, I already put some big pockets on the inside and then this is what the outside looks like at the moment. Um, I haven't trimmed the rest of the arm side out of that piece. That's not the finished texture. Still need to do that. Hey, you recognize that fabric from the last video. Isn't that gorgeous? Um, I don't like this spot. I need to fix this. This one looks too on top. So maybe a band of something else right here. Although I'm trying to keep things very vertical. This is all just running stitch, running back stitch. Holding things together and it's nice and squishy. And where are the sleeves as they currently exist? That still needs covering, that still needs covering. That will happen after I sew the shoulders together, well, after I trim this, sew the shoulders together on it, then I can sew the sleeves on, and then I can do patches that cover the intersections, and then we'll worry about the neck. But, um, yeah, upholstery scrap, upholstery, upholstery scrap, old shirt, curtains. So... Lots of fun stuff, and I mean, once you start layering, it goes quickly and it's fun. And look at all the texture. I tried to put the blues on either cuff. We'll see how that looks. And if you don't like it, then you just cover it, and it's another layer of warmth. And then this one is still patterned off that red and black jacket, but longer and with the two front pieces wider so they can cross in the front, right? Um. You have no idea how glad I am that this fabric, which I've had forever from the secondhand shop, is long enough to do this. I think I might make like half of the jacket and then part of a sleeve out of this one fabric. And maybe the pocket on the other side. And that'll be really cool. Um, So just lay it out over and then trace with your scissors. And then take this and slap it over the... 
I don't know why I own this piece of fabric core that I cut out and then lined and and then like half the jacket will be covered um went generous here because I think I want a slit in the middle of the back and so these need to be able to wrap over and enclose the slit right all right if you're gonna do full chaos gremlin with four different big sewing patchwork projects um lay them out periodically so you can see what's going on so this one is almost done just one pocket remaining two pockets inside done this pocket done uh still need to do cuffs and still need to pin some things down because this was like oh it's covered enough I'll sew it together just to see how it fits and it looks great on my kid which means it'll look great on my mama so I'll um cut out another rectangle do those and then you know finish up stuff like that just by folding it as close to where what looks right as I can colors just a rectangle of a couple different fabrics I love that one oh my god all right then this one took a different approach instead of oh it's close enough I'll sew it together everything's actually covered on this one like the sleeves are covered and everything and so I'm about to sew the shoulders together and then wiggle the sleeves on as best I can stick it on my kid and see where we stand so many reds so I think I'm gonna use a piece of this fabric here for the final pocket on that one because that'll make mama really happy to have it matchy matchy and then there yeah, that's my favorite fabric on this one but lots of beautiful stuff oh this one got a slit in the middle I need to do some reinforcing right there but then yeah there's a line straight up the back which I think is a good thing right this one is in an earlier phase and also I don't have to sew sleeves on this one there's still angles on these two but there's not a sleeve curved sleeve situation so those are the two main design approaches I'm taking so it's lined and we're doing more bluish stuff on the outside now <sighs> not quite sure what we'll do about a collar haven't decided yet then that one this one's bluish this one's what darkish this is really soft fabric and so onward all right let's film film reveals at 11 o'clock at night inside because yeah this is the vehicle that started it all the coat that started it all it's very itchy but nice clearly she's tired of my drama this one's got a button on it squish would you please if I have to. There are big <laughs> pockets on the outside and even bigger pockets on the inside and it's kind of wonderful. Turn slowly around, my love. <laughs> Perhaps not that slowly. She's trying to drive me crazy. <laughs> we have this one that's not done yet, but will be done before I go to bed. Um, There will be... A tie from that point going to the side and on the inside from that point going to the side and it'll be closable and also the faux welt pocket situation will have actual patch pockets on the inside for one's hands to go to <laughs> in just like the next hour all right would you rotate slowly my love kind of awesome yeah and it weighs a ton it's it's like a I don't know, weighted blanket, thunder shirt, winter coat. And then we remember the other two are more house coats with grown on sleeves. Yes? Very spin slowly. Very, very cozy. Very easy to do. Lots of snuggly. Again, giant pockets. She may be wearing it a little crooked, but I promise it's symmetrical. Another house coat. My darling, would you tie it in the front? Both these have shorter sleeves for working, because that's something I like in my house coats. This one's shorter. Pretty pockets. These use up a lot of fabric, which is fantastic. Spinny spin spin. See? So snugly. And when they get worn, you can just add more patches, and it will be awesome. 
It is 140 and I am questioning all my life choices. All right, this one. Ties. And then ties again in there because this coat needs to be adjustable. Um, for pregnancy purposes. It now has enormous, do you see how big that patch pocket is on the inside? Pockets accessed through faux welts because I watched videos and looked at diagrams and said welt pockets are confusing. So I came up with something on my own. If you want further explanation, just ask and I will do something. Um, okay, so coat number one. Where the hell is it? Come here, coat number one. I learned, I, I just kind of slapped it together and figured, oh, it'll be okay. And sometimes it was okay. And sometimes it was just, what the hell? So I'm going to take a piece of sorry silk and cover that. Bleh, right? So on this one, I learned that if you take, and you have your core fabric that's, the right size and then if you take and your outside fabric your shell fabric is a lot bigger and you fold it together with the shell fabrics everything sticking up and then you can fold it over and make a I don't know enclosed seam right there and it's a nice strong seam but then you look at the underarm or the hell that is and you go oh crap I'm not gonna be able to do that curve <laughs> in the upholstery fabric that is the shell and so in that case if you make the lining fabric in this case a sorry silk if you make the lining fabric all nice and long and you fold and you sew everything together so that the insides are sticking out if you sew it together you know gee, 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 it, yeah, um, then you can foldy fold and enclose seam using the nice silky fabric. And um, obviously, you might want to plan ahead more than I did. But um, if you just make the inside and the outside bigger, then you can decide the seams on a case by case basis. Um, we're going to call that it for right now. So I got, got all that absolute panic sewing chaos done just in the nick of time and everything was very warm and cuddly for the you know nightmare cold snap my sister even wore her coat out walking the dog and her dog in nightmare cold snap and said it worked wonderfully which made me realize that i needed to make my coat warmer because this that i'm working on now started life years and years ago back when I used to buy fabric new and I got a couple pieces of flannel from like Joann's or somewhere and um, did some very rectangular construction and figured I'd make it pretty later and so I added some trim to it and just you know how it is with your own projects you just ignore them for a while right but then like I said, needed something warmer because of that horrible cold snap. And now we know that the magic formula for getting rid of horrible cold snaps is panic sewing entirely too much really, really warm stuff. And then you just keep making things warmer. And then the cold will go away, right? That's, that's what I'm hoping anyway. So far it's working. Anyway, this is beautiful and this and this was actually already here this was part of like a phase two addition to this coat but i wasn't planning on being like hey look at me stitching because i'm really not sure how interesting that could possibly be but if you were wondering how i applied all of those patches yes it was just like this fold the edges under and do a running back stitch around it. As you can see, I've got a weakness for batik. Um, so for this, for my coat, this is, I guess, stage three. And now it's warmer. And I added a couple very big patches from 
secondhand shop. And so once this tiny piece is sewn on, then all of that original, very ugly, no color flannel will be covered from the outside, which will be nice. And it won't be a gray coat. So, not that there's anything against gray coat, it's, it's just not what I want. So, this is a random strip I cut off another project when I cannibalized it to make a different project. Anyway, um, right now I am sewing this to the top of the patch pocket that has been consumed by other decorative fabrics. And so the top of the patch pocket will be a little bit stiffer once this is sewn to it. Now, and then, oh, stage four on this coat will probably be to make it about 12, 18 inches longer. I don't know that I'll get to that this winter unless I need another spell to banish cold weather. We shall see. Or I might just do it for funsies. So something that some people might find interesting. See, that's how the pocket will be a pocket. Oh, there's something in here. Paper. Of course there is. Anyway, something people might find interesting. So let's say coat number one was my mother's, right? Oops, sorry about that. So it's started off like the idea is very rectangular straight up the middle right but then there's the curve for this and then there's the curve for the sleeves and then the stupid sleeves were all the curve right and then it had cute shaped pockets and then yeah and a collar the collar was a nice rectangle the the side seams were nice rectangles anyway right and so then there was, mm, oh, there was also shoulder shaping. There we go. So if you're willing to deal with curves and angles, you can end up with a coat like my mother's, which was gorgeous, and she adores it. And mostly she talks about how cute it is. Um, my sister, who, I don't know, chose to tell me more how warm hers was. Is also rectangle rectangles so far as the side seams go and then there was the back slit right and it also had a curved neckline curved arm size shoulder angle all that fun stuff curves for the sleeves and then up in the front it was two larger pieces so it could cross over because um because she's pregnant so adjustable is good right and it also had the faux welt pocket enormous faux welt pocket so that was cool and again rectangular collar so that is a beautiful elegant adjustable option and then both my brothers got no shoulder shaping straight across right but then there was an angle for the sleeves and then just a little bit of curve for the neck, straight up the middle, just different lengths, right? And this way, you don't have to deal with giant flappy arms. Um, with this coat, one of the alterations I had to make was to make the arm, the sleeves a bit smaller, because once upon once my sleeve like grabbed my gear shift on the truck, and thankfully we weren't moving, right? And so all these. Well, you saw all of them. Mine, because I'm me, is extremely rectangular construction. With little bitty sleeves. Yep. And because I want to be in a giant blanket, and because I also have a texture thing where I don't like sleeves over sleeves, I've got little bitty sleeves. There. And then giant collar that runs all the way around and then very rectangular pockets my my family got you know shaped pockets mine are just unapologetic rectangles which i am perfectly fine with they're enormous and so this was the original flannel idea especially after i made 
this just a smidge smaller and then I started decorating by going around the bottom and around the armholes and around the neck and now everything's covered which is awesome and it keeps getting thicker which is also awesome <laughs> are we doing this okay teeny tiny t-rex sleeves awesome warm coat that is enormous so oh, pockets line the collar that's a new piece too Mostly, if it's cold enough for me to wear this. <laughs> Thank you. And we have bunnies, because they are soft. <laughs> They're also choosing to be in here, I promise. Hello, old ball. Hey, Pippin. So, the intended takeaway is just that you can use whatever shape you want to. And it will be wonderful and warm, and you can put your most favorite fabrics. Boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. wherever you can appreciate them and enjoy, and enjoy them. And that's awesome.